Hello and welcome, it's DOS Semba, and I couldn't really let December to go away without making an MS DOS video. So, today on the bench, I have my IBM PS2 Model 30. 8086. Now, this computer has been on this channel a few times. The first time is actually December 2022, where I just uh, gave an overview to the machine and realized that it wasn't really working. So, on the second video, I fixed the motherboard, and on the third video, I tried to fix the floppy, which I could fix up to some point, and unfortunately, I just determined that the hard drive was gone. Now, in that video, I identified what I think is the faulty IC on the floppy drive, which is prevented the floppy from working 100%. I couldn't find that IC, so I asked my uh, viewers for help. And Mike, aka The Tech Knight, answered my call and sent me a fully working PS2 drive. So, thank you very much for your help. If you don't know Mike's channel, The Tech Knight, Please go and take a look, his, his repairs are absolutely amazing, Mike is a super skilled engineer and it's not like me, I'm just tinkering with things, he's actually doing pretty good repairs, these videos are absolutely amazing. The Tech Knight, the link is down below in the description. Thanks again Mike for your help. Now, if you know me, you know that probably I'm not going to take the easy route and just replace the faulty drive with a good one and call it a day. No, I have something pretty interesting and I'd like to think pretty stupid for this drive, so um, stay with me because uh, hopefully you're going to like it, or maybe not. So what we're going to do today, we're going to take a look at the drives, play with them a little bit and see what works and what doesn't, and then more or less this project would be complete with the exception of uh, the case restoration. <laughs> and that is the very reason why this project has been delayed for so long, because I knew that restoring that case and getting rid of all the rust would take quite some time. And that's also the very reason why the footage you're gonna see today won't have my usual front-facing camera. It's because I shot that video several months ago and then I delayed it because I just couldn't think of starting on that case because I knew it would take absolutely forever. So bear with me on that. So if all goes well, by the end of the video, we are gonna have our fully working PS2, fully restored and fully December. Now, let me thank today's sponsors, PCBWay, but now let's start working on the PS2, and particularly, let's take a look at the floppy drives. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to try is to try this drive on the system and make sure it works 100%. Then we'll move from there, but first I need to make sure that this is actually working, and also that, you know, the motherboard is working with the IBM drive, which is, should be the case, but you never know. Right, the drive is plugged in. I'm gonna use IBM DOS 3.30 and we can test it and make sure that everything works fine. Powering up in three, two, one, go. And it's booted up perfectly fine, which is great. Now let's, uh, let's try and format a disk, which was uh, something that the other drive could not do at all. Now let's uh, use the blank drive. Amazing, and that worked. Uh, I haven't. That's the first disk I can format on this system with a PS2 drive. Let's try the IBM Diagnostics, which again was not working before. and it passed the test, which is quite comprehensive. Now, just to be on the safe side, uh, let me quickly plug the other drive and confirm that the issue is still there. Okay, the original drive is in. Well, let's try and format a disk and see what happens. Drive not ready, format failure, format another. There you go. If you watched the previous video, you remember probably that what I found, which I believe is the issue with this floppy drive, is that the index pulse coming out of the drive to the motherboard is missing and it gets somehow lost 
hopefully on the IEC that I was mentioning in my intro. So what I'd like to do before starting playing with these drives is uh, remove the cover of this replacement drive and scope with the oscilloscope whether this one actually has the index poles as I would expect. Okay, so what I got here is the replacement drive, the one that Tech Knight sent me, and I'm uh, ready to format basically. Index pin is number eight, which is here on the connector. You can see the oscilloscope now, and I'm curious to see whether there's something on pin eight when the format happens. Okay, I'm on pin eight now, which is high. Let's uh, hit enter and see what happens now. And there you go, you got your index pulse, which on VNC I can see looks like it's going backwards, but that's just a frame rate issue. So yeah, this is working and that's definitely the issue with the other drive. Okay, so this is telling us that obviously the motherboard is working fine and clearly there is an issue with this old floppy drive. Now, you know, what's the next step? I know what you're thinking is like, right, okay, you got a um, very good condition, PS2 floppy drive, just use it, and this can be as a spare or something. I, actually, I can install it as a second drive, it kind of works. But if you know me a bit, I'm uh, an inquisitive person, I like to understand things. So, you know, what's the fun in doing that? I really would like to know what's wrong with this drive. And um, so I have a plan, and I'm, I know that <laughs> some of you won't agree with me, but well, the first thing I'd like to try is to swap the PCBs between the two drives and uh, basically confirm that my original PS2 drive works fine with the PCB coming from this drive. And that will tell me that the issue is on the PCB. If that is the case, I know this is horrible, but I really would like to swap that IC that we identified on a previous episode between the two PCBs. So installing the working IC, the known working IC onto the that, well, the faulty PCB and see if that revives this drive. I know I'm risking both drives because obviously, you know, I'm desoldering and your high temperatures, these are like 30 years old components. You never know, but it's really something I'd like to try. And if it works, then I'll keep the original drive with the PS2 and, and then I'll decide what to do with this one. So first thing first, let's swap the PCBs and see whether the good known PCB is reviving this old drive here. I'm marking the, the good stuff with blue tape. So every time you see the blue tape somewhere, it means it's coming from the working drive. So that's the bad drive. Put some blue tape here. So you know what we're talking about. It's off screen, but I've got some blue here and I'm going to reinstall these good PCB on the bad drive. Okay, ready to power up. Again, this is the faulty drive with the working electronics, the working PCB. Powering up in three, two, one, go. Well, still booting, which is great. Well, the moment of truth. Floppy disk in, let's see if it formats. It does, right, okay, so there's nothing wrong with either the mechanic or the bottom PCB of the drive. The issue is 100% on this PCB. So just to recap what happened in the previous video, on this very PCB I found these two logic ICs, which were faulty, we replaced them, things got better, but not 100%, and I realized that the index pulse was missing and the index pulse is coming through this logic IC which is working fine and is going more or less straight to this IC here which is well it's a Mitsubishi one it's not an IBM but I can't find anything about it so what I'm gonna do kind of reluctantly but also I'm very curious about that I'm gonna remove these ICs from both PCBs and install that IC, which is working fine, onto this PCB, which is not working fine. And hopefully that will fix the PCB and I will know that my diagnostic was correct.
All right, this is the real moment of truth. So we got here the original PS2 drive with the replacement IC, just the IC. Okay, now will it still work? Number one. Number two, if it works, will it format a floppy disk? It's time to find out. In three, two, one, go. Hmm, okay, well, the drive is doing something. Uh, DOS 3.30, F1. It's still working, okay. <laughs> this is already a good thing, because, you know, you're talking about many, many years old ICs and, you know, blasting two, 300 degrees hot air. It's probably not what they're expecting at such an old age. That being said, let's try and forward something. Finger crossed. Go. Yes, it's working. <laughs> it was that IC. Oh, that's such a great feeling. So it was definitely that IC and we fixed the drive. I know it's <laughs> totally unnecessary because I had a, another drive, was working totally fine. And, uh, but yeah, we fixed the drive, yay. And just out of curiosity, because we've been working on this drive for a while, let's inspect pin eight and see what's coming out of it. Yeah, look at that, the missing index pulse. Welcome back. So this IC is definitely, well, it's kind of faulty. It's definitely faulty. It's not working 100%, it's working-ish. That was definitely the problem. And I wouldn't have been able to revive these PS2 board without the help of PCBWay, the sponsor of this video. If you remember, in one of our previous episodes, I used PCBWay to manufacture this little adapter board, which allows me to connect a modern floppy drive to the PS2 for further troubleshooting. If you follow my channel, you know I'm using PCBWay for all my projects and I'm always happy with the quality. I'm happy to recommend them. If you want to manufacture your own PCB, you just need to find a Gerber file, go on pcbway.com and upload the file on their system. The system is more or less automatic, just a few clicks and you will receive the PCBs at your place. Take a look at pcbway.com. There is a Christmas sale running right now. It ends at the end of December and you can explore the sale. You can take a look at the PCB service. You can take a look at uh, 3D printing service and all the services that PCBWay can offer. The link to PCBWay is also down below in the description. Thank you very much PCBWay for all your help. You make my videos possible. And now let's continue with the PS2. I got this PS2 about 12 months ago and I've been putting it off indefinitely because I knew that restoring the metal parts of it would be a royal pain. I was not mistaken. I was hoping that I could just brush some rust off and keep the original chrome finish, but it turned out to be a tad more difficult than that. Let's begin with the power supply. As you can see, it's in a rough shape, rust everywhere and the whole power supply is a jigsaw to disassemble. <laughs> Look at that. Mains cables need to be desoldered and the main switch is riveted to the frame. Why IBM? The guts of the power supplies are not any better. The metal case is in an horrendous shape and the PCB has also seen better days. I don't think I can make it looking brand new again, but I'll do my best. If this has been a painted case, it would have been simple. All I had to do would be to remove all the paint with paint stripper, sand the rust away and repaint. But because of the chrome finish, it's much more complicated. First thing to do here is to carefully remove all the labels, which I can reapply later. Then I submerged the metal parts in citric acid, which is an excellent rust remover and it's kind of natural. I scrubbed the rust a lot, using everything I had available and eventually I got rid of it, even though the corrosion left some pits behind. The scrubbing also got rid of parts of the coating though, so the idea of keeping the chrome finish was a non-starter. Because it's a power supply and I wanted the case to retain its conductivity, 
I used cold galvanizing spray as I did in my Macintosh SC restoration video. It worked well. The case came up nice and it's still conductive, though the finishing is a bit delicate. The PCB is filthy and rusted as well. I really can't do much for the rust here, but I gave it a clean using isopropyl and a brush, and I was so impressed with the outcome, I wasn't expecting that. The fan also got serviced, and I sanded and repainted the fan's grill, which was very rusted as well. Reassembling the power supply took me some time, as this whole process took many weeks, and when reassemble time came, I had forgotten how to put it back together. For the main switch, I used some nice panhead inox hex screws with self-locking nuts. That worked very well, what do you think? When it was time to test the power supply, I admit I was a bit nervous. Would it blow up? Did I manage to reconnect everything properly without shorts? Well, it didn't explode, and, and it's still working. After quite some fiddling with cables, grommets and spacer, I got there. The power supply looks amazing and I really like the finishing even though it's different from the original one. What do you think? Do you like the outcome? Let's now move to the main chassis. First thing is to remove all the parts. The drive cage, the lock, the main switch and so on. The plastic parts went through some thorough scrubbing to remove years of grime. I eventually decided to remove the London Fire Brigade stickers, I'll store them safely inside the case once I'm done. That was the easy part. Then I started working on the metalwork. This is even worse than the power supplies. What looked like a little rust here and there turned out much worse as most of the rust was under the chrome coating in what I call rust snakes. The rust would start in a small location and then continue its corrosive action under the coating, creating little pockets of rust of a shape of a snake. I scrubbed and sanded for quite some time, but those blisters would not crack open. So it was time to spend a considerable amount of time with my Dremel opening those blisters one by one and exposing the rust underneath. At that point, I could remove the rust with sanding, scrubbing and citric acid. These <laughs> took me forever. In the end, the case was a battlefield and clearly needed a whole new coat. The unprotected metal would now rust before my eyes and drying the case in the oven did not help much. I applied some etching primer as soon as I could to seal the metal, and it actually looked quite nice with just the primer. I am told that chrome paint is very delicate, so I selected a metallic silver one instead. A few coats of that worked well and the outcome is not bad at all. I can still see those rust bits in the metal unfortunately. I thought about filling them up, but I wanted to finish this project before Christmas 2063 which is an important year if you know Star Trek. And it's done! I am so happy to see the metal cases done. It was quite some work. I am pretty happy with the outcome and the color, particularly if you think on how it was when I started. Now it's time to start reassembling everything again. That again took some time, as I had to remember what went where and find all the parts I had stored while the project was being finished. It was quite a weird feeling to see the shiny motherboard going back in. He had been wandering around in my shop for months. I had almost finished when I noticed a small piece of plastic left behind. I could not remember where it goes, so I asked on Twitter. Epictronics was happy to inform me that the location of that bit is under the motherboard under the drive cage. Do you know what that means? Yes, let's take everything apart again. 
Well, thankfully, I got a bit more familiar with how things are put together in the PS2, so that wasn't too much of a big deal this time. As the final touch, the labels are going back on, the plastic backplate is reinstalled, and after so much time, I can put the lid on and screw it back. What a journey! Now it's time to configure the PS2 and test it. It's done! It's amazing! I love it! Too bad for the hard drive that couldn't be recovered and I don't think I want to try and buy another one of these hard drives because as I discovered in one of my previous videos it looks like these type of hard drives are self-destructing because of contamination internal of the drive itself. An idea I have for the future would be to try and control the head stepper motor of the drive using an Arduino and a stepper motor driver and then use the LED activity output of the XDRDE to just drive the stepper motor like random movements just to make that squeaky noise that really identifies the PS2 Model 30. It's taken a while but I'm so happy this is done. The PS2 Model 30 8086 definitely has a special place in my memories. Well, I think this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, as usual, I'd appreciate a thumb up down below and also a comment if you want and a subscription, why not, if you like this kind of things. Uh, I think it's time for me to wish you Merry Christmas 2023. I thank you for watching and I hope to see you again here soon on my channel for my next videos. For now, thank you very much and goodbye. Bye-bye.